we have a concert in the big hall. And okay, no. Okay. So, it's a great pleasure for us uh, here from Sibelius Academy, together with my colleague Erki Leisma, to, to, to introduce you, Josephine Knight, as a, our honorary guest uh, this year. And, and when, when we invited you here, we didn't know that it's going to be a, like a big cooperation and collaboration between Royal Academy and, and, and Sibelius Academy. It just turned out to be like that. And thank you for that and making it possible. Oh, well, I'm, I'm absolutely, you know, delighted to be here. I'm really honoured to be here at this, this important and um, prestigious festival. So thank you so much for having okay. me. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. And I don't think we should talk too much, but I'm happy also then Erki will go later to, to London Absolutely. To, 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 to continue this and I'm really happy that, uh, that Maria Morphy will start this, this masterclass. I was very worried that Daniel would start because he's not very famous for waking up early. But <laughs> <laughs> he's here, he's, he's here. here. He's here, but I'm mean, very much more calm when I know that Maria is starting because she's so yeah. So proper, she still plays some Rahman in Sonata with Valeria Vesian, who is a pianist of our festival. Okay. Pianist, an honorary pianist of our festival. Yeah. Without her, there's no festival, there's nothing. Oh, fantastic. It's the end of the cello world, if she doesn't play <laughs> We don't want to think about it. No. <laughs> so please, fantastic. enjoy. Yeah, we'll Thank you so much. Well. Thank you so much.
stuff, some really, some really lovely, lovely playing. Um, lots of things to sort of talk to you about. Um, firstly, we absolutely never want to have our stand covering, I'm sure that you've been told that before, and particularly there are certain pieces that we need to approach sound-wise, certain sonatas especially that we need to approach as if we were playing with orchestra, and this is one of them, yeah? And of course your dynamic range needs to be massive, mm. but we don't want to feel that this is a piano concerto, which it is, with cello accompaniment. We want to really feel that we're part of the party, yes? <laughs> so you need, same with the Chopin sonata. Um, mm. And uh, what's more difficult, Chopin or the Rachmaninoff for piano? Different ways, but actually most, both are comfortable because they are very pianistic. Yes. Yeah, maybe a little, it could be less notes in piano. <laughs> so your top five maybe would be of difficulty, Brahms, Brahms F, Brahms F, yeah. César Franck, yes. Chopin Sonata, Rachmaninoff, anything else in that top five of difficulty? Well, Beethoven fifth. Oh, Beethoven fifth. Okay, um, but you know, so I would move the stand so that you really, your your as Charles Beer, Sir Charles Beer says, your F sound holes need to be free. Yeah, we and we need to be able to see you. Um, so our dynamic range needs to be huge. But I wonder if you could think more that when you're wanting to play softer that you don't play further away from the bridge, but that you just lighten the bow pressure. So mm -hmm. in other words, you are really thinking that your sound is going to be hitting that back wall, yeah. So um, at the beginning, um, you need to think very carefully. Obviously, you haven't got anything to worry about is this conversation between us and the piano, but I still think that we need to have presence in the sound. Yes. Um, how, what are you thinking about in terms of the opening until we get going with the Allegro Moderato? Like musically, what's in your mind? Like, for instance, these, you know, the, these semitones. It's almost like you're questioning, and then you have maybe, I'm not sure, yeah, and then I, I feel that you need to answer the piano there and come in a little bit sooner, that, that if you wait too long, we kind of lose the response, so you're questioning her, yeah, can you, can you try that? I, I was trying to explain with you, that with pedal, so <laughs> listen my pedal. So let's just do that one more time. So keep keep the same point of contact, but apply slightly less pressure.
this is mezzo forte, I feel this needs to be much, much uh, more passionate here. Like you're, you're getting a little bit more impatient, perhaps. Yeah, well, just from the same idea with the piano. <laughs> From the same place? piano with orchestra so obviously we want the difference but I suppose it's the difference if you're doing that sound of I'm just, I'm just demanding a little bit more from the bow so I'm still trying to keep within the umbrella of piano but really feeling that I'm pulling that sound and sending that sound 
to the back mm -hmm. to the back of the hall. So um, can we just do double bar? Do you think? No, no I don't. I don't think so. No, absolutely not. <laughs> thinking about it just cellistically we lose the message yeah so one more time same thing It's a bit too... Can you be very, very firm in your, in your hand here? So you've got the softness in your, in your bow hand. And then you've got firmer. Again, we need, that, we need that articulation to carry to the back of the hall. So look right on the... On the yeah. of this if you were to actually vibrate on the on the quavers every time when you have because if you do it feels too easy but if you yeah so every the emphasis should be pardon pardon yeah can we do one more time yes. Can you give us just a few beats into her? And here, this is pianissimo. I really think that you could just... That kind of sound. Yeah. 
um, create a slower shift to to create some expression. So you you've decided to, to not to shift there. So, So this is where I, I really feel that we could utilise our, our speed of shift to really create expression. Can we do that, our tempo, before... just to hear exactly what you're doing that beautiful really gave me goosebumps um can you just do from i just want to so you can really hear what you're doing without piano So the notes before the change of bow, I feel you need to love for longer. <laughs> um, where you like you don't want to leave it, and every note with people. Yeah, because if you listen to someone singing that, they would not stop the love through the notes. So can we do it now with piano? stress points or different fingering or different place of where you construct the shift because they're just a little bit similar yeah. for me so it feels like you're saying the same sentence again in the same way um, and also when you come out of the lower one it's almost like you want to be So let's just go right on the, the Pew Mosso. Really spectacular. But let's go right on. Yeah. Okay, good. Much better. Where, and you know what? The 
beauty of it is that you don't actually need to tell us what your what your message is. It's your secret, but actually that it means something. When we listen to it, we know that you're you're feeling something about the story. Um, I don't know how we're doing for time, but I really wanted to make sure that we cover um, the end. And if we had time, then we could work back backwards. But actually, just before the end, where we have this this glorious. Um, <laughs> Enjoy that the the intervals we have. Then, 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 then. I just don't feel enough tension through that phrase. Um, okay. uh, yeah. shaking you up and then you're like woof you're off you go you know which is just fantastic that that be natural when we have uh, about one two three four five six seven bars in i wonder if that should be on the a string because that's um <laughs> that's, it's too late to go to the c to the a string for just the c and the f I've, I personally, I feel. That needs the power there. Can we just do it one more time and then we'll go to the ending? If you keep your contact point good to the bridge, you know, I mean, obviously we can't play too close to the bridge as we're on the G string, but I would be, your contact point should be closer to the bridge, but you're, as you're playing the quavers, you should not press too hard mm -hmm. so that you really... <laughs> dig in a little bit more because it's obviously the nature of the thinner string so the tolerance is better so let's just do that see if that works um from the just right on that bar maybe <laughs> Like 
indecision there because of course you you could be, you could be shifting on the old finger and with an intermediate note but I think make sure you really that you really commit to that yeah same place from there to go into thumb position there. Can you, can you reach that with, as long as this is straight, right? Not too low, not too low, higher. So you want this, if you put your bow on your forearm, yeah. So that's C, come back to the F. That's the height you need to get to before you leave the position. And you prepare with the clockwise. So it's so clear your structure of how your, you, you, obviously musical message, but how you're going to get there, yeah? Same thing. Okay, thank you, Ergie. Okay. <laughs> child do not touch that fire it's hot but it needs to touch the fire to know it's hot so it's like you need to push the cello to the limit to know what the limit is and when it will show you what the limit is because the sound will not be good but if you sit back from the limit then you'll never know I just wanted while um Daniel's getting his stuff up I just wondered if you could enjoy the ending where we have all these back to back semitones. And then time. Yeah. So it, it needs to be more impatient, and then when you have. Take off, yeah, but first, but here, be more. I know it says our tempo, Paraso never listened to anything that was in the in the score, did he? <laughs> um, so I, I think here we can just enjoy the moment. So, what about going from? Surprise us there, yeah? Good. Lovely to see you. Yeah, you too. You too. So, 
third and fourth movements. Um, uh,
He knew exactly what he wanted in every bar. And I, I feel that you are missing lo lots of detail. I mean, even, even the last, um, the, the, this last gesture, he, he has, which edition do you have? Yeah, great. Can I just see the last, what they have on the last page? Yeah, exactly. He has ba da dum, ba da dum, not ba ba ba, ba ba ba. Yeah. It's ba da dum, ba da dum. Yeah. Someone told you that already. No. no. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's not. It's yeah, and that's very different. And he doesn't. He doesn't just write one accent. He writes an accent like that and a sforzando. So he really wanted it, yeah? I mean, really, really wanted it. So I feel, you know, you can memorise anything. You've got a big brain. But I wonder if it would be really helpful even to be looking at the score away from the cello. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, because like I, I, I feel like you've made me a really lovely meal, but it's lacking a bit of salt and pepper. Yeah, it just, I want more oomph to it. Mm. Yeah. Can, can we just do the ending first? Um, you know, when you have um, this into 66, so into the toll, uh, can you do maybe from... Do you want me to get my score? Well, well let's do it. It'd be good, okay. it'd be good for you to, to see. Yeah, I think it would be really helpful. Yeah, it's very useful, this accent. Because yes. the orchestra takes care of it's just a bit. Absolutely, yeah. and, and he was a great orchestrator. I think he yeah. knew that. But if we don't have enough emphasis on the pavada, it just goes ba da bum, bum. If you don't hear yeah. that ba ba ba, that energy. Um. Right, so we can just do from maybe uh, 65. Sure. And when you get to when you get to 66, we have here this kind of this this sort of death toll. Um, but, um, so, yes, exactly. I, I wonder if you could do something in the vibrato there to, to highlight that when you have it. And I feel that this should be slower, più lento. Strange place. 
place there. It's not our tempo. It's before that, which again gives us this unrest. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes you feel really uncomfortable. And that's what I feel. Generally, I, I wonder if you could vary your vibrato much more mm -hmm. to create expression and non-expression. It, it's it's too similar for me. Yeah. Um, and particularly when we come to this, um, you know, this 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 coda section, and also the third movement, which I, I would love to touch on. So let's let's do from sixty five. And the fortissimo, but that was super. And I, I almost want to feel that this kind of out of breath, you know, the kind of the feeling of just un, just unrest. Love it. That was really fabulous at sixty six. Same place. as well as 
the right, otherwise it really dies. Yeah? Okay. Same thing. Re so much better. From the... Oh, actually you could do the second one of those, couldn't you? Uh-huh, okay. And then Zora. Yeah. And then you've got somewhere to go. And it is, it's amazing. He's going from fortissimo to pianissimo in two bars. So when you have the, I think you already need to be getting softer. for him in, in those two bars and then he feels more passionate again so there are lots of extremes there that you could bring out much more and, and again he's so clear when he wants the expressive accent and when he wants the, the real bee sting of the the the, 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 the sando so when we have the that's an expressive but then nothing then the sando the differences that it's all just a little bit too similar mm. with a with with a lovely sound that you're making could, could we do same thing <laughs> should and you've got the don't change your slurring there then, yeah 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 oh yeah 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 I'm, I'm, maybe that was just a mistake that was really super if you were singing this you would have to breathe here and i feel we need to breathe with the bow otherwise it it feels unnatural it feels like we're out of breath but that was glorious. From the dolce, of course, you you could even add a different word to different finger. You don't even have to show it that much. But uh, okay. uh, you know, the other thing is, um, I feel the important shifts are the ascending shifts, not not the descending here. I don't. I don't personally feel it works. Yeah, I, I, would, I would keep that clean so that you can really highlight then the next shift which is with Sorsando. Okay. So we've got to be so careful with how we're constructing what we hear and when we hear it. From the Dolce, 2 before 68. Okay. Yeah, sorry. That's good. Yeah, two before. He's right. Two before. Yeah, you're right. <laughs>
advice would be that you don't get slow in that bar uh, when you have a... Because otherwise the orchestra take your tempo and it gets slower and Adrian, slower yeah. and slower. So if that's an opportunity... <laughs> And the second one is Fortissimo Crescendo to Nuto Sforzando Molto Alegando. So I would take that that you could milk that a bit more. Yeah. Could could that shift be slower so that you really feel <laughs> give us that that timeless shift beautiful um let's go from la Gamente. maybe from there okay. Tranquillo, then Ritenuto, and then Lento. Mm. I would... He uses all words for getting slower. Oh, <laughs> he certainly wanted it to get slower. And personally, I feel that. Can we just play it? Yeah. of that the vulnerability of up the G string you know that it's, mm -hmm. ooh, it's, it's for me it's too easy using the A string it's, something needs to it's not about um, it's about choosing it for the musical 
reason rather than um, trying to score points. I'm not mm. into that at all. Um, but do you see the timing? Make the orchestra wait. Really make sure one and almost like they don't want to, you don't want them to play that downbeat. No. It's almost like you know when that downbeat comes that it's over. And you don't want that downbeat to come. Mm. Yeah, so make them make them wait. Can can you do from something you're saying where you want to Preparation, your preparatory beat is a little bit vague, but I, I would do it on, yeah. like here you are again, like you know, you haven't given up, um, quasi resistivo, um, and then he marks more chords, doesn't he? Yeah, so um, I feel that could be more authoritative, yeah. yeah. Um, so I would do on on, on the beat. Yeah. yeah. Can you just give it from just do seventy two? Yeah, it's, it's just a bit. I feel like you're going to play. I <laughs> you do, but I want. <coughs> I 
encouraged that you're slightly angled so it's more comfortable that you're as you prepare the new position you, with the height you've also come back a little bit to beautifully prepare an easier motion actual physical movement if you're trying to shift yeah yeah So in other words, you know, successful shifting, two main components um, are preparation of height, arm height, and timing. So if you, you want those two things to be absolutely clear, and so you have the information, you know how to prepare it in your practice with your timing of how you practice the timing of your shifts, We've talked about this with the one and two and three and four and in the bow, and then execution on stage. And if those three things are in place, you're in a good position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in a good position. Okay. Well Thank done. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Okay, so this is yeah. so beautifully. Do you want to know more of the detail? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You really do. Thank you, Mary. I mean, like places like. Um, when he marks, um, where did I know? Yeah, da 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 yum, ba da dum, ba da da dum. Not ba da da yum, ba da dum, ba da da dum. Yeah. So ba da ba yum, ba da dum, ba da da dum. Um, ba da ba yum, ba da dum. Yeah. Must be da yum, da da dum, da da dum. Ba yum, ba da dum, ba da da dum. Yeah. Yeah. Those little details just add more excitement to it. Yeah. Yes, I will. Well done. Thank you. Start with the first yes. and focus on that. Because we only have uh, 45 yeah. minutes, sadly, so um, maybe we don't have to play the whole. Or yeah, I'm wondering actually. Yeah, you can stop us. In, so. Yeah. As much as I hate stopping you, it's nice to have a, a 
chance to really um, talk about the music. Yeah. Okay. I have a score here if you like. I, you I, um, I do too. I also um, have this wonderful uh, Pendler app. Ah. Do, you, do you have that where you can no, um, and download all the scores from um, so I can have all the, the piano parts oh, in, in my in my iPad, which is just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
be coming as well. Service. <laughs> service. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. That's we have some cool. water. Thank you. That's really fabulous. Okay. No, um. So whenever we play Beethoven, what makes it difficult? The markings, I think. And then elaborate. Yes. You say the markings. So what about the markings that make it difficult? I think because there are a lot of them and it's like you have to be really exact with them and not to make it boring still. Yes. And yeah. Yeah, I, I, you're absolutely right. I mean, the thing, the thing is about how we play Beethoven is that every single slur, every single shift has to be perfect. Has to, you know, stylistically, we're looking at clarity, so we don't want to hear romantic shifting. So we've got to be really careful about how we're fingering it. Yeah. And if we have to shift, we've got to be really clean in our mm -hmm. approach. Perhaps use more of our old finger shifts so that it's more sort of classical approach. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and also, for me, I think the main focus is that we need to emulate, we need to copy more of the piano's approach to yeah. the slurs. Um, and every single slur needs to be perfect. Um, and what we, what we don't want is at any place, I mean it's everywhere, but when even when you have a, even there we don't we don't we don't we don't want that connected. Can can you just play us something of our part so we can so we can hear how yeah. She makes it sound very, very easy, <laughs> but um, but that we need to listen to how yes, the piano yeah. would would shift. Especially would when it's repetitive, not yes, exactly. Because sometimes acoustic eats, and I hear like da, I, da, I, da, da, da. I absolutely yeah. agree. So yeah. our our it, we've got to be so clear. Of course, we don't want um. What we, So all every single slur that he does not let us have a moment to breathe. Um, so that's something that I think that we need to work on. The other thing is, I wonder sometimes if you could experiment with using slightly lower positions whenever you have anything. It immediately gives oh, yeah. a little bit more um, clarity to the to the sound yeah. mm -hmm. and. Ideally, we don't really want to find ourselves there unless we absolutely have to be yeah. there. Yeah. So, um, I mean, there were a few places where I felt perhaps you could rethink your um, your choice of string. I mean, you know, there's never a right way and a wrong way. Mm -hmm. That's one, one of the many things that Pariso taught uh, Erki and I, is that, you know, he was a great believer in us all thinking individually, wasn't he? Um, and and I, I think that's really important and, and there certainly isn't one one way to do it. But I, I, there are a few places that I wondered if you could experiment with choice of string. Yeah. And actually there was one place um, in the Adagio where when you have... Um, and then you have... If you are going to do the A string, which is mm -hmm. absolutely fine, I feel that you need to really lighten that transition, otherwise yeah. it, it becomes a little bit too, too open yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and personally I feel the openness comes through the E flat yeah. rather mm -hmm. than before that. Yeah. So can we just start it again? Yes.
any crescendo. Yes, yeah, of course. Can, yeah. can you just do it once, not to say that I want you to do it this way around, but I often do this, practice it the other way around. You mean going? Through? Yeah, oh, and hey. so that, uh, um, you know, life is a compromise, right? What, yeah. what, you, what you gain in one, you lose in another and vice versa. So the, the, the game would be that you don't have the worry of crescendoing the, but the, the losers you've got, to, you've got to do the forte piano on the other. But I think it'd be good for you to hear it the other way around for the third and fourth beats, no crescendo. Yes, yeah. So maybe just give us the second. Unusual. <laughs> yeah, again, um, tensions in the air. And yeah, nothing. and yeah. actually, you you work so well with the upbow forte piano, and it gives somehow because it's an upbow, you're not too aggressive with it, which gives this depth of forte mm -hmm. piano. Yeah. So it, it's amazing. I actually, I would I would buy that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's really super. Okay, so um, let's go from bar three. It breaks your heart, doesn't it? It's mm, so yeah. glorious. And um, if you're going to choose the D string, which is absolutely valid, I feel that you need to have played it on the A string in order to feel that the colour that you're searching for. Mm -hmm. Because obviously your approach to the D string is you're going to be is a softer approach in character. But I wonder if physically you're just a little bit too not enough in the bow okay, yeah. I just feel that you haven't found your sound can you just just play the D a few times and just experiment really feel almost all the tips of your fingers of your bow arm they need to be alive yes, yeah. of searching that you, you're almost you know I, I have um I have a very shy dog she's very very beautiful she's a show cocker spaniel and she loves the cello, of course. Um, but if if people come right up to her, she just woof comes. It's not would never hurt anyone. But if you're gentle, so if you and that's how I feel. We need to be with our. That you need to coax. Like you're so you're so um, in touch with your cello that you're a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you just yeah. experiment with that? So can I hear, can I hear that without vibrato? Uh, yeah. point of contact which is very good how would it sound if you were to tilt the bow a little bit more okay. towards you okay yeah okay so that is really coming now that's uh -huh. really exciting so now i'm wondering if that if you were to sing that d mm. it would flower through yeah. the note, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? So we need to create that with the vibrato, yeah? So that you don't want to be, give away what's inside the flower yet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah? I just want to have a quick look at your, what you're doing with your left hand there as well. So start with almost, let, let it just naturally develop. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, lovely. Now let's just do one last. 
last thing before we add the piano to that. Start that D on an up bow. Again, I'm not yeah. saying this to suggest a different bowing. I'm just because it's much more natural for us to develop an up bow, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So you can hear that. you don't need to do anything extra because it will naturally yes, develop yeah. so we want the download to sound like that mm -hmm. okay <laughs> um so can you give us yeah What do you, where, where, where are you shifting now? Are you doing? Or what are you doing? Yeah, I hear that. Mm, yeah. So either um, be more careful with the shift yes, yeah. or change the fingering. We just want it so clean, yeah? yeah? cup of tea extensions yeah but I would practice them because yes. they get you out of all mm. sorts of trouble yeah yeah I really would so beautiful let's go right on your solo does it influence you mean oh right on the bar oh, seven yeah. your, your solo yeah <laughs> clarity of when you hand over to piano yeah. and then your your slurs I, I'm really liking how that you're it, it, loving the first but I think it needs to be more direction it means also pardon I, I miss a little bit more direction yes because so I have this long notes yes I, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can help with that definitely yes. um but you need to immediately step back into the, mm -hmm. the wings there. Yeah. So why don't we do, that was really lovely. Um, second bar. Second bar of it, yeah, of our age, yeah. yeah. that in one bow and then okay. it, then change the bow and make it sound like one okay because otherwise yeah. we get mm -hmm. or, and there's no direction but actually yeah. that that portato writing really we want the direction don't we to the G yeah um, and I think you could enjoy That, that slur on the F sharp as well. Mm -hmm. Can we go from bar 11? Yeah, and sorry, isn't it kind of my demo now? Pardon? And isn't it my, and she's a little bit... Yes, yes. yes. Or, or it's kind of... I think, it's probably, I think it's probably equal yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes, I think then... then anyway, we... this is more company house, maybe. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes, uh, and then you're more yeah. come. But could we help you by moving yep, through yep. that a little bit? So actually, by running out of bow is really good because it will give some direction. Yeah. Just try it once in one bow, even if it doesn't work. in tune. Can you just play for me um, on your own? I just want to see what you're doing there. intermediate notes there um good so let's just try that maybe uh from the second bar bar 12 <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do from bar, um, what is that, 16. Uh -huh. The forte piano. Let's go directly from your pom pom. Yeah. yeah. 
this tricky, it's not tricky, but we have to negotiate lots of different string heights. I would really make sure that you're anticipating yeah. with your upper arm. So you're already at the A string. That was uh, all that I was going to remember. Um, why don't we do from 19 on the super to forte there? Yeah. but my teacher uh, taught me to switch but can we hear it once yes. with two n compromise two notes slurred okay yeah yeah and one separate yeah sponge on the liquid and the longer you leave the sponge on the liquid the more liquid it absorbs mm -hmm. so if you really allow your brain to absorb that distance mm -hmm. and so do it one last time and then I just want you to test that yes So now I want you to do a silent shift. Stop the bow. Yay! Believe yeah. it. Believe it. And actually in that test, I would, in order to, to create independence of the hands, what I would do is actually encourage my hands to work independently by stopping the bow and not allowing my bow to move while my left hand's moving. Yeah. And then allow. Can you just do that for me? Yeah, yeah beautiful. Yeah. And of course, our approach to the string, bearing in mind we're in a higher position, D string, we're going to need to be more in the string than yeah. you think. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's test that. Wonderful. What about 23? Yeah. And 
classical period and even in Bach's time, often a slur was written when you want when the composer wanted expression. Okay. Yeah. So when when we have I want a tarum, yeah. tarum. There's not enough gesture in that for me. Otherwise, you could tum pa pum yeah, pa pum. Yeah. yeah? Um, same place. Or you could do the next bar, E flat. Yeah, the twenty-four. Twenty-four. Oh, okay. Yeah. do in your vibrato <clears throat> through the E flat yeah. to show when we arrive on 28. Yeah. So we were talking about that with Daniel in, in you know when he had the <laughs> you know the, the, you almost want to give and no one has to even look at you because they can hear how the note is developing yeah. of when that next chord will <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, whatever. Yeah, I mean, so of course it's much harder on the D string, but you can do it. Yeah. But there's, I think, what the important thing is that you don't, you're not too alive at the beginning yeah. of the notes, so you've got, you've got, you shoot yourself in the foot. You've got nowhere to develop yes. to. Yeah. Um, that's such a glorious moment as well there. Well, and that you need to enjoy that. What about, um, what do you say? Yeah, from the okay. pick up to 27? Okay. I just want... There's something about yeah. the connection. I, I like the struggle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. I like the struggle. Um, also, very important, and in any genre, actually, of music, when we see the accents like that, mm -hmm. I feel we need to approach that with left hand. So it, it doesn't matter if we're doing Beethoven, Elgar, Rachmaninoff. Yeah. Then we have the forte piano, which dark, longer forte piano, yeah, sort of heavier. Yeah. And then we have the Sforzandos. So I really feel that you could utilize perhaps the left hand here with your... So the right balance of left hand and right hand here yeah. to create more energy. And of course, in Beethoven, when he writes lots of sorts and those, we want it, each one needs to become more. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, can we try, uh, also I'd love you to try fingering, so you're not around. Yeah, just try it. Yeah. Yeah, at the beginning of the note. Yeah. It's not... 
Lots of sports sando. Yeah. <laughs> gain some awareness yes. but you know but it's it's a real problem because there just isn't the money they just oh, don't have it. so we have to, we have um i mean the allocation of to per student is shocking yes. um, and of course all the pianists that come to the Royal academy all think they're going to be yeah. soloists i always told uh, my students that it would be so great if you get a boyfriend or girlfriend who is pianist if you buy chance, you can get them after. So. Yes. Well, uh, well, yes. that happens. <laughs> yeah, but it's a bonus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But really, yeah. you will have it in your pocket. Actually. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, it, I don't know what can be done. 50% of oh. each piece is required. Of course it is. Yes, and also, actually more. Uh, well, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is, isn't it? And the thing is, what happens is, then they have an ability to... They switch off. It's very easy not to listen. You know, if there's no one to listen to, then they're not listening. You know, so it's it's a real problem, and we're trying to solve it. But um, at the moment, I think they're, thinking, they're talking about actually 
bringing in that whoever comes as a pianist, they have to, as part of their course, uh, play chain music with. Do they have to? Because, you know. We are called here a chain Well, that's yeah, absolutely. That's and that's, that's the right word. Yeah. 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 I don't like a companist, the word a companist. Yeah. It's yeah. not the yeah. right word. Yeah. Well, you should yeah. be. Yeah. You absolutely. I mean, it's a He, I studied in his hometown. Did you? Natal. And am I right in saying, Erki, that Pariso, our teacher, he he only had one teacher. His father. That's right. Which who was his stepfather, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. From, for yeah. something like eleven years or something, and mm -hmm. that was it. Yeah. Incredible. It, uh, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So I'm just going to find my score of this on my. Uh, here we go. So, this piece is 14 minutes or something. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Would you like to play all, it all through, or is that? It's, it's up to you. How, I how mean, you I, feel I, I'm, you can, I'm just. You oh, can stop me any time, actually. I've, I've, I don't want to stop you if you feel that it would be useful to to play it all, or do you want to look at me when you feel we, you're ready to stop? Yeah, sure. Or yeah. how, how new is this piece to you, or is it an old friend? It's a kind of old friend, comes and goes. Like. Okay, yeah. and do you have anything coming up that you are having to play this? Oh, not really. No? Yeah. Okay, well, let's so stop we then. Really let's stop, and then yeah. maybe, yeah, give, give me a, a look. Because when you... we also did the practice. And it's yeah, recently. tricky as well, yeah. Okay. Just... I'm just going to grab my arm. Um...
Paul. Will you give him a round of applause? <laughs> um, really, really really um, so tell us about this piece. Um, it's one of the pieces that Korngold wrote after he came back from the US after the Second World War, that he wanted to write concert pieces again, not uh, only film music uh, as he was doing at the time. And he, he, I think his, this piece comes from a movie called The Zeppelin. Yes, it does. And it what, was a love triangle yes, between, uh, between composer, pianist, and cellist. Yes, now there's, a, there's a triangle for you. Actress. Pardon? Betty Davis. Betty That's Davis. right. Yeah. That's right. So, yes. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen the, uh, the film Tar, have they here? Have you seen it about the con female conductor? Is it out? Tar, the new one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I will tell you later what I think of that. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, height of romanticism. Um, and you really have li free license to think in terms of uh, squeezing every ounce of expression into your fingering choices, your shift choices. Um, and he uses a lot of uh, playfulness around the E flats and then the E naturals, you know, mm -hmm. this kind of going from one character to another. Um, and then he also uses a lot of just, just well, it's everywhere, the, the same note. Da, da, ya, da, 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 da. And I, personally, I, I'm just wondering if you could think of perhaps chain, having a different finger to change that character mm -hmm. sometimes. Generally, um, point of contact. So you're, what's happening is, and I've got a wonderful view of where your contact point is. And has this been something, you're looking at me like, has this been something that's been discussed? Yeah. Okay, so talk to me. What are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to change? Uh, it, it's just some, some, um, some, some basic, um, uh, some t like when I when I think about con consciously, I can control everything that I want. Um, but then when I try to just play in inspired, it it kind of slides out. And and what do you feel? It's which way is it sliding for you? That what do you think that is not successful for you? I, I think it's in that. The last third of the bow, mostly, and um, and what's happening in that last third of the it, bow? It's it's here, right? Sometimes, and uh, and um, unconsciously, I, I try to compensate with some weird movements. Right. My arm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my my um, my feeling was that, um, and I I don't know if it might be partly the cello. And it might be you, so it might be a little bit of, there needs to be a little bit of an adjustment there. But I, I felt that if you play in the, the top, if you really play in this part uh, near the bridge, there are very few times that you can get away with making a good sound there. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in the Vorjak concerto, when the orchestra is taking the sound from that, and that you really just want the power um, and some other pieces as well. But mostly, I think it's a mistake to mm. try and play that you think if you're going to play in that really the closest to the bridge that you can right. and feel it's going to sound as you want it, it won't. Yeah. And I wondered if you could think about bringing the contact point on, I'm talking about on the A string, because yeah. of course the other strings we need to have are closer to the bridge contact point. Yeah. But on the A string, I wondered if you could experiment with actually being a little further from the bridge, little further from the bridge when you want to, when you want to play powerfully, but actually um, experiment with different arm weights. Right. Yeah. So I'm not a big believer in that if you play soft, you play here, and if you play loud, you play there. Yeah. I actually think at, when we're playing solo, maybe, maybe for chamber music, yes, of course, and certainly for orchestra, 
But for solo repertoire, your window needs to be narrower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without question. But that means you shouldn't be playing too close to the bridge either. And other observation that I had is whatever's happening with your left hand, your right hand should not be reacting. Yeah. yeah. And at the moment, of course, you've got all these leaps in this piece. Yeah. And it's skidding too much. It's reacting. Right. So, so I'm just wondering if you could just make up some exercises. Mm -hmm. In fact, why don't you just play, um, you know, that lovely uh, after figure nine where you have a... And I would love you just to, just to practice... And making sure that in our shift practice we should be also focusing on the right hand as well as the left hand. Can you just play that for us? happening in the left hand. Mm -hmm. um, you could, to help that shift a little bit, prepare the height of Yeah. Just so it's more... Let's face it, if you're ready at the height, all you're doing is opening yeah. the, the hinge, yeah? yeah. But so I, I would set up exercises where you're having to be quite busy in the left hand with bigger leaps, but this is absolutely constant. Right. Yeah. Um, do, do you practice scales? Yeah. Do you practice arpeggios? Yeah. <laughs> yeah really. This is only live streamed, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, one arpeggio practice that I really love is if I'm doing, say, E flat. <laughs> if you could just play that for me a bit. So you're going to play three notes to the bow, and then you're going to play Yeah, 
So there's a, just a sort of tweak. It's a bit like, um, you know, we need to do this every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like sort of cleaning our teeth. Um, we, we might have done it yesterday, but we need to do it today. Yeah. And that's like intonation. We need to do it every day. Yeah. yeah just to check that it's perfect. So can we just try um, thinking about contact point, independence of the hand, yeah. soft thumb, arm preparation. Yeah. Yeah, from the beginning. then you need to let go and start thinking yeah. about the music again. Um, <laughs> that Just where you got to, talk me through, how are you negotiating? Um, are, you, are you at... Uh, and then are you on the A string already? Uh, um. Um, And the B to the G. Yeah. But that's different from what you just did. It's just two yeah. minutes. Two seconds. So, yeah, yeah. so the decision that, that, that I would make is, do I musically want to highlight the interval or highlight the note? If I want to highlight mm. the interval, and or I'm playing a classical concerto and I just want it to be a clean, you know, shift from A to B, connected, I would use old bow, old finger, or old finger if I was in the same bow. All right. If I want to highlight musically the note, then I would shift in the new bow with the new finger. So you've got choices again. It's not Right. You could do that, oh. or you could do, yeah. yeah, and that obviously gives the expression to the G, right? Mm -hmm. And the timing of those, both those shifts are completely different. Right. So the old bow timing is a slower, slower shift. You start the shift earlier, and the new bow timing is later, therefore you're bringing out the emphasis of the note. Mm -hmm. And I feel that you need just to really think about musically what you want to say mm -hmm. in order to then technically practice in a way that is really there right. in terms of supporting your musical intent. Yeah. Um, so, and also I think you, sh you could have much more fun with the... Um, the it, I'd spend a little bit more time maybe on, mm. on the E naturals. Mm -hmm. Um, just to bring a little bit of there, um, and so not the same timing. Right. So now I want you to do from your entry at one, and think about musically what you want to say, and then think about your shifting bar before one. Yeah. Or bar before yeah bar before four rather. Sorry. Can we go right on? <laughs> Supporting, mm -hmm. for me, because we're supporting 
you know, technically you're thinking how you're supporting your musical message. Um, if, if I'm being picky, I'd like more accents. He marks the accents in unusual places. Which, yeah. And he, in fact, not only marks an accent, but he marks Fort Sandoz, doesn't he? So, um, mm. yeah, he certainly wanted them. Can we then, can we, because um, that's all pretty similar at figure six, can we then go to figure nine? Yeah. And I just wondered, have you experimented with some different options of fingering, even no matter how, I mean, Paracel always used to say to us, no matter how mad, try it, you know, mm. but or, I, I don't know, I find that there's, it's just a little bit safe, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there's so many things, you know, I mean, it's risky, <laughs> right, but there, there's something lovely about, about that shit, you, I mean, you could even come back sometimes again. I'd want to try out all the possibles and then lay them out <laughs> and then think, right, what do I want to do with them? Yeah. But not the same. Yeah. Can you play around? It doesn't matter what happens. No one's listening. And if you don't like this extension, you could do. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you? One time, which would be really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, then you were thinking about left hand, which is absolutely fair enough. And then you lost your contact yeah. point. You went too close to the bridge. Right. And then it, it didn't sound as you wanted to, and it reminded you that it's not happy. Right. So I think we need to listen to our cello there and what works. Um, also, are you absolutely clear when you descend after that glorious... Then, which finger are you shifting on there? And then which bow are you shifting on here? Is it... Is it interval or is... Oh no, you know, is it, I really would want that defined. Because we don't just want... Yeah. Not that you sounded like that at all, okay. but yeah, yeah. there's a danger of it, right? Right. So, p personally, I, I was always taught that descending shifts, you should shift on the old finger. And if you listen to really uh, great opera singers, singers, they use this system that we're trying to emulate you know, the old bow, new bow, in their musical message. Mm -hmm. And they would never sing yeah. new finger yeah. or new bow. And then, of course, you've got choices. Uh -huh. So I, I just play around with that. It was so glorious. Can we go from, um, is it 10? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That was almost like a no shift. 
like a no shift descending. <laughs> to I think it was um with Daniel is you know make sure that your preparation height is really there we, it's a big interval so if we're here play the B play the B and now come back to the D and don't lower your arm. It really does. Um, so just go from there. Is it, uh, what is it? 12. 12, exactly. the length of notes. I just want you to experiment with Is it getting louder? No, it's not. If I go, what you're doing is you're squashing right. the resonance. Yeah. So it doesn't. You've got to be careful. Of course, I'm. If I had a pound, I wish I could say euro, but I'm not allowed to anymore. But if I had a pound for every time I'd said to my students, "Play closer to the bridge," I'd be very rich. But in this instance, I, it's not helpful to you. Right. It doesn't give you. You know, what, what Rostopovich did was, as he played louder, he got fatter in his sound. It really, it's not the way to go. I would apply more weight and really be active here with yeah. my fingers. So just play the E. I mean, that just, isn't that just glorious, that fat sound? And it just, 
Wow! It's completely different. This is the way you need to go. This is the way you need to go. Um, so, this is everywhere, right? Uh, so why don't we then jump to uh, 20. <coughs> of sound I wonder if it's just a bit darker yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it's not the same is it Hear a sound, so it's never hit. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. always quality from the from the outset. What are you trying? What would be your uh, direction to show expression-wise here? Because at the moment you're doing quite a classical fingering, so we're not hearing any of the. Or, I, I just would love a little bit more spice. spice yeah. And I'm just wondering how would it be to even try it? And then you've got, you know, so you could actually show the difference. And each one of the gestures of the same notes do it differently, fingering right. wise. It's just a little bit too clean for me. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit too. Yeah, it's a little bit too few hundred years earlier. Yeah, right. Can you try some? Yes. 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 A bit too pure. So, from there, the bar comes in. Or bar four, yeah. Heavier, yeah. yeah? Um, just, just more weighted. 
And, and uh, that was fabulous what you did earlier. I uh, absolutely loved that. And I loved how you waited when you did, you breathed with there, which was gorgeous. And then actually you, you then panicked and split the slur, but you didn't need to because you- Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Well, that's okay, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter. Um, so just, where's a good place to go from? Maybe just 25, but keep, it, remember we, you know, um, he, we want heavier, romantic, in the string, yeah. on the string, chocolatey, dark. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, from just on, is that all right? Just 25? Yeah. As it gets to the A string, it becomes a little bit, little bit light right. in, in <clears throat> sonority. It's not, it's not just a comfortable ending. Um, how are we doing for time? Are we all right? Uh, no, one minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, what could we do? Any, anything that you particularly like to cover? Well, it, why don't we do, go on to the next bit, the glorious lento. And again, think about your choice of shift. Yeah. Descending shift. Right. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I think it's too predictable. Right. Soprano character here, so complete opposite to the, the heavy, darker, tender, heavy character. Yeah. Keep it more tender. Yeah, can we, can we do from 27?
really beautiful playing. I was just wondering, the, the first time that comes, we have it tender, and then we have... Okay, and then we have... And then the next one, how would it be, have you ever thought of that actually lighter? Like a more of a memory. Have you, have you ever thought of it that way around? I'm ready. Do you want to just try it? So if we've got time, play from... Um... Uh, the, 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 yeah. The, yes, the, after 28, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Very nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Very lovely to meet you. Um, so we have Yancha, yes. don't we? Lovely. Great.
So, um, again, um, how much would you like to play, or shall we? We can just start with the first movie. To start with the first movie, yeah. see how we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. because the time goes so quickly. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah.
well, I started last year, but I didn't play for a long time. Yes, yes, yes. No, it's just good for me to know yeah. how much you've kind of lived with it. Um, and um, what what are your thoughts about what you're trying to say musically, like in terms of how you're approaching the piece? Mm. Well, it's the same that based on fairy tale, then. Mm. So I, I think I would just rather give some um, pictures, maybe. Mm. Uh, yeah, like for some stories, uh, kind of background, maybe, sometimes, and yeah, some images. Yes. Yes, and I, I think that what's coming over really well is that you're keeping the sort of, um, in terms of the naivety of the piece, in terms of the fairy tale aspect, in terms of through the through, through maybe children's eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it, so often this piece can become um, too, too mature is not the right way to say, but do you know what I mean? Like it needs to keep that the essence of 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 the fairy tale that that, that, that children believe. Mm. We need to keep that very much the innocence of it also. It mustn't ever become really cellistic. You know, we must always keep the musical message at the forefront. Um, yeah, have you put the pizzicato? at the beginning, have you really thought about how to develop each one of those gestures? Um, you know, have, have you have you ever practiced them literally just back to back? Like the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth yes. one? You have. And how are you trying to approach developing that and also making sure that there's that they're different? Mm. Ultimately they're different. Well, except the, the dynamics, that it's getting mm. uh, bigger and bigger. I was thinking about entering earlier, uh, like after the piano, each time. Right, that's, that's, yeah. that's interesting, yeah. Okay, and I just wondered, have you thought about showing the timing of... And then we have, and again the same, and then we have... Maybe uh, you often don't vibrate on the the middle the, the, that you you do, mm. and also have you tried uh, with thumb? Mm. Can I can I hear it once with the thumb? Uh, every every note. Yes. love it more. Mm -hmm. There's something, I mean, look, you know, if you look at our bony fingers, yeah. it's, there's not enough, there's not as much flesh there as on our thumb, right? So the difference of, it's very different, isn't it? Yes, Completely yes. different sound. And I mean, there'll be sometimes, you know, for instance, in the Shostakovich sonata, when you... Sometimes you you want that that sound, yeah, yeah. So just do the. Be careful of the sonority of the D flat. And you, it's interesting that he marks the hat accent on the E flat, not not the D flat. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's do it, and then and. Then give me the one, two, th three, fourth one. Give me the, the where it goes to G major. Can you just play that one? Much better. The, the trick is that with the thumb, that you don't, you imagine that this is the paddle with your thumb and that you are. This is this is constant, so you you're not doing that. Mm. Yeah? So when you have you're not doing you're not coming away.
away, you're not allowing the whole arm to come away from the cello. So this is constant and it's like a, it's like a paddle that you're, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you, you are the... So I'm, I'm really, can you just do that from the... And is there any way that the wrist can not be higher than the elbow? So bring the elbow, yes. Ah, that's better. Yeah. Ah. Yes. And now we have the resonance. Yeah, lovely. So um, let's do right on there, the first one, or should we do from the beginning? Beginning. You can just leave the chord. Okay, play the chord. The chord. The first flat where you've just got to mm. how are you going to find it because it's a little bit of a shot in the dark isn't it yeah it is so could could you find it from if you have you come from a third finger on are you doing three one there yes, yes. so you could can you yeah, yeah so it's a re very quick you Not only, but I practice. And actually, the, the first finger C flat could be still with thumb behind, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Was it Jean Dron used to get all his students to practice all this? to do just to feel comfortable with transferring fingers and the other thing is I feel very much that when you get to that moment that you your point of contact is too far away from the bridge so even though musically we say oh, yeah, da, 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 actually physically mm -hmm. you need to be closer to the bridge so let's do that last one which was glorious what you did this one. Give 
energy at the end of the bar there into the downbeat then mm. um and because you're it says poco hairpin up where, where you have um <laughs> careful it's not too much there just because mm. you're using the a string yeah yeah the a string will give you that hairpin um so really really well done why did, where's a good place for you to go from yeah just on it then da, 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 da. <laughs> just knowing how to fight them you know so just really watch that and the other thing I noticed because I've got such a brilliant angle of your left hand is that you have a tendency to play with your thumb very convex mm. and that restricts being able to reach whereas if you were to open it out you'd be able to reach further so just something just to think about you know um, just softening that shape um, and Musically, this theme comes a few times, doesn't it? Um, da, ya, da, da, da. Do you do the same fingering every time? Um, I've changed it a few times, and so now I'm doing the same. Yeah, but when, mm. like, for instance, this time, you are you thinking of the focus points <laughs> on the F flat, or? <laughs> So that so that the the focus is on a different colour on a different note a different portamenti into a different moment. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit too similar. So why don't we go to the next similar passage after the da dum ba dum ba dum? Yeah, um, maybe the two. What do you want to do? Two bars before. Um, yeah. Okay, from, okay, just give the pick up then. Yeah, so you do that the first time, don't you, that fingering? Yes. So give me something else. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No word? Maybe. to hear the bit before that yeah and if if you are going to do d string when you do be careful you you need to compensate for the d string there because it's a very different color from or, you need to work a bit harder at keeping that one from color yes
So if you were doing it disturbs the phrase for me. So if you are gonna do it otherwise it, it, it breaks the phrase. So just be aware of that. And he yeah, I, I just feel that you could open out more going up to the top C. Can I just hear you without piano? How, how much sound can you give us there? Um, that, again, we, we were working in the Korngold about creating, as it gets louder, giving more resonance. And again, I think you could really think about the balances of point of contact, how much hair, how much weight. So can you just play from the bar before? And just so we could just, and if you want to hold the C, that's fine. Okay, so now let's have a little bit more tilt to the bow and a more weight, but slightly a tiny, like, two millimetres away from the bridge on the C, just the top C. Yeah, so as soon, as soon as you play there, you make it narrow, you make it very close. But if you just bring a little bit further away from the bridge, I'm only talking the literally millimetres, um, but apply the same weight or more weight I'm wondering if it will give us more resonance. Just play the C, top C. Okay, can I hear it without vibrato? Okay, that's interesting. So now let me do the vibrato. So you play the C. But I would have your thumb as the anchor, yeah? changes, yeah? Yeah, so I, I wonder if the vibrato is a little bit of the culprit, rather than we're blaming the bow as well. Mm -hmm. it, the, the, what happens is, if you don't have your thumb in touch with the cello, there's no anchor. So actually your vibrato, you, you've got nothing to really balance the hand. It's not in touch with the string the whole time, but it's certainly close. To, you don't want it too far away. Can I just hear it again? Now tilt the bow a little bit more towards you and more, more pressure, less point of contact to the bridge. So I'm wondering how it would be if you tilt towards you. Yeah, that's, yeah. Has your bow had a break? This bow? Yes. Mm. No, was there, I could just see uh, something on the, the, no. No, no. No, no, no. What did you do differently then? Change the finger. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, if only it was that simple, hey? But we, you've got to be able to make that sound on the third finger as well, mm -hmm. because it's wonderful. So listen, why don't we, uh, have we got time to go on to the next movement a little bit? Can we? Yeah. Eddie will tell me. Yeah, we've got, we've got time, good.
So uh, a few things to talk about here. I, I think you need to grade the dynamics more. Yeah, I almost don't hear sometimes ending mm. down. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, difficult to continue. That yes. I mean, even at the end yeah. where you're triple piano, we still want to hear... Um, but I felt that the beginning could be softer Okay. Actually, I've, I've, I felt that the pianissimo at the beginning you could be much, much lighter. Um, you need to work harder at your left hand. It's awkward, but we really need to practice. It's good for our left hands anyway. You know, I think all of them could do with some left hand practice. I think you're relying on the fact that you're the, the actual plucking of of the the right hand will be enough to hear the second note it's not we mm. don't hear it die young yeah um, um if you want to hear amazing left hand pizzicato listen to rostopovich's britain unaccompanied suites i mean his left hand pits is extraordinary yeah i mean it makes it sound like somebody else is in the room I mean, it's, it's, so you have to, we have to work much harder than we think. Um, also, I, I would love to talk to you about, because you, you really nailed all those difficult high shifts, but I was worried for you in the ones around that, because I'm not sure that you've got a plan of... So can you just show me from the Ancora Pumoso, how are you, are you on a second finger there on the A flat? Second, actually, I think. Oh, so you do two two. Yeah. Why are you doing two two? Yeah, because my third finger fails. <laughs> so you, I think you need to make your third mm. finger as you love your third finger as much as your second finger, because you're too young to think. Well, I'm going to avoid the third finger for the rest of my life. Mm. Yeah. Practice left hand pizzicato with your third finger, trilling third finger, just, you know, lots of vibrato practice of just third finger, and within two weeks it will be as happy as your second finger. Because I'm not sure musically we want to shift there. And also, if you're shifting between the A flat to the D flat, then you've got to go from the C flat back to the A flat. Mm. Yeah? So, I, I mean, if we, if you were... flat and the A flat, I really feel should be an old bow shift. And then, then old, old bow. I mean, I'm not saying you can't shift at a D flat. That's absolutely ridiculous to say you can't. But I think you need to make absolutely sure that you know which finger you're shifting on mm. and which bow you're shifting in. Can you just play that just slowly? So I can hear your thought, progression. Yeah, so if you're going to do three to one, mm -hmm. where is your third finger in the new position? Which is it So you, you did, didn't you? Three mm -hmm. one. So where is your third finger in the new position? Of, where does your third finger fall on? Which note does it fall on? In D. No, that's your first. So in the new position, you're coming back to one. Mm -hmm. That's 
that's your that's your ticket to success. Preparing the new position. So we're never we're not we really are anticipating the new position. Yeah, with a clear idea of musically if we want to highlight the interval, which would be old bow, old finger, or new finger, new new bow for highlighting the note. So if you said to me, no, I really want to, I really want to highlight, I can do the D flat, then that must be old bow. And then you want to do three, you could do four. So it's so organized. Can you do it one more time? Just play around with it. It doesn't matter what happens now. on the D flat, mm -hmm. can you reach it? Just about probably, yeah. But if you couldn't, you could bring in an intermediate note. Couldn't you? Which you wouldn't hear. Just give me a hint of the intermediate note. Because actually, this kind of stuff you could even practice away from the cello. And if you're if you're sitting in a situation where you've been given a piece of music that you've never seen before, you could be mapping out your structure of shifting without playing a single note. And this is what Rostropovich did. He this is how he worked. He 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 worked it all out. It, even the musical aspects of what he wanted to do, he worked it all out away from the cello. He didn't even get the cello out of the case. Or by the piano. <laughs> or by the piano. I think, he, I think he went to the piano a bit more than he went to the cello, didn't he? But you know, so I, I, the power of, you haven't practiced those shifts, but you're, you're playing really expressively and it's solid and it's there because you're, the message needs to be sent from the brain to the fingers. We always blame the fingers, but actually we need to know, you know, I mean, when I walk out of this building, I'm not really sure if I turn left or right to get back to my hotel. And that's a very dangerous position to be in. And it's the same with shifting. If you don't know if, what finger you're on, then you, it's not going to go well. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be really, really mapped out. So um, that's, that's fabulous because your ascending shifts were great. But I think you should practice all your ascending shifts going to a third finger to make yourself feel comfortable about the third finger, yeah. Um, and so just give me a little bit of the beginning dynamic wise, not all of it, just, um, just in terms of, I sort of imagine that the children are sort of playing in the playground. It's very delicate. Mm -hmm. Just do that. Really work at that left hand. One more second. Okay. Okay, so that's the pianissimo. Then give me um, the adagio mezzo forte dynamic. Give me the forte. You need to work at the left hand. Really pluck that string. You almost you need to play forte with the left hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as well. Can you pull the string? Ah, that's better. Yes, that's much better. So that's that's the forte, and then give me the um, the very end, the last two bars. 
Let's do it with, with piano, the last two bars. So when you do ta yom ba, that needs to be in your left hand, still mezzo forte, even though you're yeah. triple yeah, piano. I, I have stress after cello goes like that. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, sure. Sorry. Yes. So softer with the with the with the. Just a few things to think about. I mean, gen generally, technically, I'm a bit afraid for you that when you come into thumb position, your thumb is not centered mm -hmm. on the string and then therefore you have no anchor. I mean, do you, do you know at which point you need to come into thumb position? Can you reach, can you reach C to C with thumb behind? So going to the third finger, our favorite new finger is the third finger. low here yeah if you're low you can't reach so, so I turn it on its head find the top note height come back and that's the height you need to get to mm. yeah yeah so is that about maximum you think you could get to can you get to C sharp not can you 
with thumb behind and not cup, not creeping round. That has to be absolutely central. So that so C to C is the limit. So that's really important to establish that because that's the same with F to F on the G string. So you want to really know that that is all with thumb absolutely behind the neck. When you go past that, then you, I would really encourage you to think of where your thumb is. I mean, um, Paraso used to get us to... Uh, because basically establishing the shift and then the position and the relationship between the notes in the, in the new position. So, you know, you could just make up some shifting exercises mm -hmm. really making sure that when you don't need to be in thumb, you're not. Mm -hmm. And when you are in thumb, your thumb is actually not in the air. Otherwise, you, you just don't have the security. Um... Uh, a lot of this I, I really I really love. I just wondered about it's it's it, what worries me about this theme is that I always try and bow it so that the weak beats don't fall on a down bow. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if I mean I don't want to disturb anything that you've discussed with your teacher, but I'm just... Yeah. Then, yeah. I'm wondering... Or what I am. That worries me. I don't know. I would I'd really try and play around with lots of different bowings to ultimately to get to work with the natural fact that the down bows will be stronger than the up bows mm -hmm. and that the shape is then followed in your bowing no matter how mad the bow might seem you want it what worries me is da -da -dum -bum -ba -ba -da -dum. Mm -hmm. and not if you say to me i want to achieve that then you're doing the, the right bowing but if you want da -da -dum -bum -bum -ba -da -dum -bum -bum then I would think maybe think of something else. Uh, the other the other thing is um be careful. Don't like that shift or anything. But if you, you did that a few times and I, it was just broke the phrase. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just play the beginning and play around with some bowings. Yeah, but, but already, I, I don't mind the fact that you end that on an up bow. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe that we should bow something just because we have to end on a down bow all the time. Why? Yeah, that was lovely. Then do the next one from the D sharp. <laughs> need to go back to the original bowing and, and be very careful that your down bows don't make the, the weak beats 
um, heavy, which is that second beat of the third bar. That, that's mm. what disturbs me. And often we come in a full circle, don't we, where we turn it on its head, try all the different variants, and then we come back to what we decided and then be careful with how, how make it work. Mm. You know, be very, very careful with how we actually approach the down bow. Um, yeah, do, do for me this, I felt you could be a little bit more sort of spooky, change the, the, the colour when we have after, are there any, um, you know, when you have this, uh, just, I, I just wonder if you could just play that for me. Later on, can we do? There's no, there's no bar numbers or letters or anything. Um, I'm sorry, maybe you could, can continue without piano because I have you've to got to go. The next so. No, 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 go, go, go. I think we're finishing any minute now. Anyway, just do for me um, the second place, da, 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 da. from here. <laughs> of a wobbly, the vibrato is too obvious here. Mm. So you're, you're quite wide. Can it be really within the, the boundaries? rather than an expression. Yeah. So if, I'm just wondering if you thought more of your forearm here. Just play the B flat and let me do it. Soft thumb. So really... So now I'm, a, now I'm just aware of a lovely sound rather than a vibrato. Now a little bit faster, because of course we want the vibrato to come from the forearm, right? Now go to the D flat. singing and you think oh yeah that's absolutely beautiful you don't say oh what a beautiful vibrato do you <laughs> but when you hear singing and the vibrato is too intrusive you will then say oh I'm not sure about the vibrato so we want it to be there but but just highlighting the expression rather than obvious at the forefront does that does mm -hmm. that make sense yeah, so it's almost like I would pick out notes like we are now 
and strip it back and then add the vibrato gradually and you turn the tables back on yourself and ask yourself what do you like mm -hmm. does this is this are you happy with this you know and definitely coming from the forearm um, so that you can grade the speed and width yeah well mm -hmm. done Thank Super. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Erky. Thank you. Well done. Bravo.